the final presentation uh, is Latham are going to be uh, talking about, and it's the Glastonbury Way, uh, and it is, I suppose, the most modern and the, the newest pilgrimages that there have been, are uh, no doubt will be to come in Glastonbury. So, uh, Liz and Liz, or Lynn and Liz, two words in a that you may have way that's been on on a loop in the town hall all day so that's if you haven't it's a bit late now because we were finished yeah but that's well otherwise we'd have had it here but we thought you know we didn't want to repeat it <clears throat> and the stalls but we have got a map and the way so has everybody seen the map and the yeah who has actually walked the glastonbury way anybody yeah or parts of it i mean it's 7.5 miles i think you got it what was that what did he say it was a piece of cake well it's not supposed to be hard did you want it to be a challenging one well that's good because it's meant to be something that you can enjoy uh, not to be overly arduous any special moments that anybody had walking it just to share I just, yeah you can tell I'm a trained teacher I want a bit of interaction as we start there anything anybody wanted to share I love the fact that on the beginning of it Yeah. There's lots of sheep, and so you're walking between the sheep, and they're all free. That was very memorable and meaningful. My mum and I walked, and then there were some bulls. It's very engaging with the environment and with the animals. Beautiful. So engaging with the animals, the sheep and the bulls, and yeah. So anybody else like to add? I don't have a map of the walk, but I think I have. Hi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 For those who can't quite hear, I'm repeating for those who may not have heard. So now we're hearing about the views um, as you're walking it and the beauty of that. So, yeah, but nature again. And anybody else? Just a few more before we move on. Do you want to say? I'll just say, yeah, tell the uh, names of views that, uh, and the uh, going, to, going down to where the trees are. So that we uh, do there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One more, one more before we move on. Anybody else want to share a, a special moment or a magic moment on the Glastonbury Way? That's what we're doing at the moment. No? Okay. It's been really interesting. I've been in most of the talks today. It's been really interesting listening to them, particularly Marion's talk that gave the historical context to the pilgrimage and how from, you know, a Christian base, but then also the different aspects. And I had the map in my hand. And as, as you were talking, I was thinking, oh, yes, there's a Christian um, uh, a site and building an aspect. Oh, yes, we've got the trees in there, Gog and Magog. Oh, yes, there's the Celtic spirituality. Oh, there's the goddess temple on here. Oh, there's sacred sites, the Chalice Well and the Tor. There are views and all sorts. So feeling quite smug, actually. It's like... Um, you know, in a way, we knew that in our souls and our spirits, but we didn't actually logically sit. Uh, and had we done that, we'd probably still be organising it with a group of people. Um, so what Liz and I 
want to do is actually tell the story. And the image of the pilgrim I have in my mind, you know, on reality TV, there's quite a few pilgrimage programs. I like them, actually. I watch them. So you've got this group of disparate individuals, often uh, interfaith from different faith traditions, who come together from different perspectives. And they're a bit of a ragtag and bobtail and not quite sure if they like each other or whatever. And then they walk this journey. And then by the end of it, the connection and the love and the experiences on the way gel them and they end up in a whole in a very beautiful synergy well that's the story of the group of 11 people who co-created the Glastonbury way it came it happened because the town's fund the town's deal gave us 45,000 from the accelerator fund. So what's interesting here, it originated actually from a secular source that that money was available in the accelerator fund. And the Conservation Society, and then some individuals, including myself and Morgana, and William Bloom, along with councillors, the town council was involved, there was a passion and a commitment to put something together that actually encompassed right across nature, spirituality, myth, legends, history, the eco-natural side of it, and a good walk from the Conservation Society. And I think it's fair to say at the beginning, those perspectives didn't all coincide in a nice, neat, beautiful interconnection. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we might talk about that later. I remember conversations where the historian wanted something about a road that came from Wirial Hill to take the coal for the Second World War. And the ones from the Pilgrim Receptors going, who cares? Like, nobody comes to Glastonbury to find out about that road that took that coal. I'm bored already. And the historians were saying, you can't put that in. You can't prove that King Arthur was here. Yeah? Why are you putting that in? And we were going, and it's exactly what Marion was saying. This is the mythos of this land. This is as important to us as whether you can evidence a historical fact. Yeah, we'll do that when we come to the Abbey. We can put in those sorts of facts.
work on a screen all the time. But we were trying to agree the route between the people of the Conservation Society who had really clear aims about tree planting and access on particular routes. And then the route that we needed for it to become a proper pilgrimage route and Morgana was looking at the, I was producing spreadsheets with, you know, colored cells and trying to sort things out. And she, she said to me one day, I, I don't know how to tell you this because it's going to be a lot of work, but we've got it the wrong way round. <laughs> okay, Morgie, where do we start? And, and, I, and she said, sit down. She sat next to me for half an hour and she talked me through it. And I realised I just had the route the wrong way round. And, and I think of it, this is ridiculous because we're all hills in the first bit, but I think of it as the lowlands and the highlands. So you go Weirial Hill and then all the lowlands and the river and the um, permissive path that belongs to Sustrans. And then you come back to the town and then you go to the highlands. So then once we got to that stage and we had the route, that was the beginning of these two disparate groups, because they were disparate at times, weren't they, Lynn? They started to come together, and then at that point, we divided the skills and the experience into two groups of people. So you had, if you think of it as hardware and software, if you work on computers, I was on the hardware group with, the, uh, with town councillor Ian Tucker, and the people of the Conservation Society, and the town council, town clerk, Gerard was brilliant, and the people who work here. And of course, the town hall wasn't open, so they had some spare capacity, and we had some lovely weather, so they didn't mind at all, actually, putting up new gates. And then Lynn headed up the bit that nobody's ever been able to do before in my lifetime, which was to pull the history, myth and legend together in a coherent form. That was a massive skill to do that and to get that together. And, and it continued to push and pull all the way through. And we continue to order new gates, kissing gates, tons of stone clear paths and all the rest of it and, and i you know i spent the 10 days over christmas new year can't even remember which year it was now but i spent 10 days walking all of the paths in chunks and as i walked i took photos made notes of everything that had to be done and then added it all to my spreadsheet so once i knew that I was getting on top of the framework and that we had the people who could make that possible. Uh, and my partner works for a civil engineering firm, which doesn't helps quite a bit now and again, because I can get hold of things and I can get his knowledge. And all that time, I'll hand back to Lynn to, for you now, because all that time, Lynn was the one who was working with the graphic designer. And we were really, really keen, weren't we, to keep the money in Glastonbury? If we couldn't keep it in Glastonbury, we kept it in Somerset. We did not want to be paying London designers or big firms from, I don't know, Hampshire or something. We kept that money local. And uh, I'll hand back to Lynn, who did the most amazing job. Right. OK, we all did. We all did. I'm going to name some people now because it was a real team effort. Yeah, it was a real team effort. And Elizabeth Thans in the room and Barry... Um, uh, Barry Taylor, they were not part of this, but their passion for pilgrimage set a tone and a basis from which we were working. And Morgana had been very involved in Pilgrim Reception Centre. John Capra and myself had joined in later. So there was that passion. So, so Morgana West was a key part of this. Liz has already said what her role was. Ian Tucker, Mike Smythe, Ian Motch. Um, Adrian, I don't know his surname, Anita uh, Gerard, um, and William Bloom. 
as well. William Bloom played a key role. So the team that I was coordinating, we, we, it was like we said, we're not having a chair, we're going to be a peer group. And then it got so heated at times, uh, it was like, go on, Lynn, sort it, help us sort it. So, so that's how that came about, actually, um, because it was what went, we had to produce 15 boards. You'll have seen, I think it's 16 now, actually. So if you haven't seen the boards, please go and find the boards around town. We wanted those boards to be distinctively Glastonbury. So it's circles, colour, different. I must have looked at so many boards on walks and places, and they're all flat and square and often uh, not a lot of colour either. We wanted it to appeal to children. We wanted it to appeal to everybody. And I have to say, Richard, what's Richard's surname? Kingston. Richard Kingston from Young Rascal Design. He's awesome. So it was hours and hours of, of him doing different designs. So those boards, and then we got that they were bubbles, and they were circles, and it was like there'll be a legend bit, there'll be an eco bit on nature, there'll be a, a myth and a legend, and there'll be some historical information. And then trying to do that on 16 boards that are about that big, um, we couldn't have done it. And William is, is beautifully pedantic down to commas and semicolons. And he doesn't mind me saying that. I've got his permission. It's not, 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 not a negative thing. So he's edited encyclopedias or something. And it showed. So we had that. Um, Morgana was pulling together with the legends. I was kind of synthesizing. Adrian was the historian. And it was an amazing thing. And we all learned a lot. We all learnt a lot. And then Lizzie's group, you were doing the land bits, weren't you? So this was going along. We didn't have a Christmas that year, did we? We didn't have a winter solstice. I think I was doing three days a week at one point, fully on this. Couldn't keep track of the emails. If you knew how many edits we had on those uh, boards. But we did it. We actually counted. It was about 1,300 hours of volunteer time from this 11 people plus the contractors who were out on the land doing things. And we did everything locally other than the app. We couldn't find somebody to do the app locally. Uh, William led on the app. So it, that was what was done. So we had 45,000 funding and a six month deadline. And we think it was closer to 150 to 200,000 investment of time that, that happened uh, in terms of the love and passion because it was all done with, with voluntary and volunteers. So the challenges were the permissions. And remember, you had to do, you and Ian in particular, did so much on talking to landowners, getting the permission, making sure things, people were complaining about things. And they were just awesome. Because what would happen, we'd meet separately every week, the groups, and then we'd meet every fortnight. The two groups would come together. So endless Zoom meetings, et cetera, et cetera. The information on the boards, because <laughs> we could have put 10 times more information on them and getting that uh, down. Um, the crazy short time scale, yeah, moving from silos to synergy. The joys, well, we did it. <laughs> if anybody, I've got grandchildren, anybody watch Dora the Explorer? Whenever they've done something, they go, we did it, we did it, we did it. There was very much that kind of feel that we did it. Because <laughs> there were times when we were like, really, we've got that deadline and we've got to get it done. The positive feedback, the positive, we have... Ian Tucker actually stood up, didn't he, when we did the celebration at the end. It was the first time we actually came together face to face. We had a little celebration. Um, and he said he'd been a councillor nearly 50 years. And this is the only project that he hadn't had complaints about and people raising a fuss um, 
which was really interesting. We've had lots of suggestions for improvements each time, and we acknowledge the accessibility issue, uh, which is now why we've got it on a loop, and, and that's something, and John Cousins and there, we were talking about earlier, and there's, there's how, how we can constantly improve accessibility, um, but we, we'll do our best on that into the future. So, so in that sense, it was a really enjoyable um, and challenging thing to do. So we did, so obviously there is the walk. I, I, I oversaw the information board. Morgana West oversaw the map. So that was another massive thing that happened. So thing from the Peace Pole, Weirial Hill, a bridge, I never knew um, Pompali's Bridge was probably the hardest information board to do. That was interesting. And we had to say, well, some will be more historical because really that's, that's what there is to say. Um, the churches, um, the goddess temple is on here, um, uh, Bushy Coombe, Paradise Lane, Gog and Magog, obviously the tour and the chalice well. I also want to say that every organization we contacted or talked to about getting permission to put their pictures, their logos, they everybody was absolutely up for this. There was a unity, you know, this unity through diversity, and the, there was a real unifying, yes, people wanted this, they could see it. Um, and then um, having the map, that was none of that took ages uh, in terms of what this looked like and how we got that together and, and made sure we got other things in. And then William said he would lead on the app. So William um, Bloom led on the app. If you haven't got it on your phone, if you literally go to the app store and put the Glastonbury way, you will get an app. And some people have asked me, why is there an American accent on the app? It's a Canadian accent, because it's literally William's wife, Serena, because we were literally pulling in people like, will you do that? And who will do that? And oh, yes, oh, and my John did loads of work in the background, like you said about your husband working there. So we were literally pulling people in. So there's no mysterious thing about that. It's she would she was willing to do it and she did it because it took a lot of time and energy to do that um so the benefits i mean what what we actually oh, trying to get the words that introduce this map um which i'll read them out pilgrimage is at the heart of glastonbury so this walk can also be a way of mindfully supporting your well-being. We've put that first, actually. There was an interesting conversation earlier, Liz, about people saying how well-being is getting linked to pilgrimage. We were really clear all the way through that this was about well-being as well and your spiritual development. The growth of love, compassion and connection because Avalon, heart chakra of the world. So we were picking up on that. And then we suggested to have intentions. So what we were very mindful about doing in all our language and all our literature and the information board is not to be coming through one particular perspective, to have a more open language, to articulate pilgrimage and how you can experience this. And I can't remember, one of the speakers said, it's about being on the pilgrimage and seeing it through your own eyes and being able to have your own unique experience of what is happening. And that was underpinning this, this very, very much. And as I say, the feedback has been tremendous. Um, so the benefits, one of my favorite feedback points was a, a, one of the uh, head teachers saying, oh, I did the Glastonbury Way. I have learned so much. Right, I'm going to make sure all my pupils go and do that at some point, that it's a way, it's educative, and it's a new way of learning and understanding about Glastonbury. Health and well-being, delighted to hear that it's easy enough to do. 
It's not overtaxing or overchallenging, whatever age you are. It is attracting more pilgrim, pilgrims and walkers. I've bumped several times into groups who said, no, we are here to do the Glastonbury Way. We've, we've heard about it. We've come to do that. It's getting national. Uh, and Guy, who was marvellous this morning, he's been incredibly supportive towards us. Economic benefits, because it's bringing more people in, so they're spending money here. Uh, the merchandise that we've got here, we immediately, to help the Glastonbury Information Centre, if you haven't got your bag, get your bag at the special conference price. Um, all sorts of, and um, I go everywhere with my um, water bottle, so we've got the water bottles. Um, the raised profile in terms of not just the Glaston Centre, but but our, it's, 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 it's refining our place. Um, Marion, you might want to comment on that, see if I'm right or not. But my feel is it's refining our place. Yes, we've always been a place of pilgrimage, but it's a modern offering for modern times that's a broader perspective. And yes, we use local contractors and designers other than the app um, to... Um, to again have economic benefit and to include uh, contractors into the town. Do you like anything you'd like to say, Liz? Um, I, I just like to talk to you, and I may get some of the terminology wrong, so forgive me if I do. I remember one day I was down at Brides Mound with Serena Roney Dougal from the Friends of Brides Mound and Bob Croft from the Southwest Heritage Trust. And when I was growing up in Glastonbury, Brides Mound and Beckery, it was a very industrial area then. I mean, it, it, it still has its industrial legacy and that will be renewed and revitalized as part of the town deal, as I'm sure you know. But at the time I was growing up, I never went to Brides Mound. I spent my entire life on the you know, Bushy Coombe tour side, but I never went there. And I was stood there one day and Serena was talking uh, about her understanding and beliefs. And Bob Croft was talking about the archaeology of the place. As a local person with some farming links, I was talking about a local farmer who used to tell me that he used to walk across the brew in the summer. Before those big banks were built, there were blue life slabs in the, the bottom of the river, and he could remember walking through the river, literally. And I said, well, that would be coming from the west, wouldn't it? And of course it is. And I said, so I'm here. I know someone who did that. He's died, sadly, now. So I, I'm the connection to someone who forded that river on the Blue Lias. Serena is here, the Friends of Brides Mound. Here's the man from the Heritage Trust who's got all of the proof of the early Christian um, cemetery there. And they were within 50 years of each other and they were talking their own histories. And I was the link to the modern times because I knew farmer Henry Tinney. And I thought then, and I still think now, that was a microcosm of what Glastonbury is about. And the Glastonbury way is a microcosm of all that is good and best in Glastonbury, because the different groups somehow managed to work together with the same aim, knowing that they were delivering for different people and different audiences. So it's, it's like a bow shape. You start here, you come in and you join, and then your audiences and the people who benefit are much wider again. And we sat right in the middle of that bow, and we worked like stink, but I wouldn't have changed it for the world. And it was one of the most enjoyable things I think I've ever worked on. Thank yeah, you. I really echo that. It was, it was fabulous. It was fabulous. <laughs> Um, and, and the Avalon Anthem, the chorus is, uh, unity through diversity is the way we love, the way we live. Unity through thy diversity, a gift of peace to the world we give. And I think the Glastonbury Way is another way of gifting to the world to the, the, the beauty, the magic, the history, 
the sacredness, the myths, the legends of Glastonbury. I'll just say very, very short. What we hope will happen is that we'll eventually have stamps and passports. We're talking about making it more formalised. We've been having conversations. We've got new volunteers coming in who are like, why, haven't there, why isn't there a stamp? Why isn't there a passport? Where's the list of accommodation? Why isn't it more like the Camino way? So that's something we will be looking at because, of course, accommodation, um, and again, it's bringing uh, business into the town. So, so there's more things that we hope will, will happen with it. Uh, who knows? Magic uh, Glastonbury has a way, I think, of just making the right people appear at the right time uh, and making more magic happen over and over again. So, so that's a kind of overview of, of how a modern uh, day pilgrimage, uh, other places will do it their way. This was done the Glastonbury way with a, a lot of graft and hard work and some money that came in and then a lot of love and a lot of synergy and um, just people turning up and giving their love and their passion. So happy to take any comments or questions or any ideas um, about how we can develop it. Um, but I do want to pay tribute. It was a team effort. It was, um, it was, it was done with love. Um, what's that quote? Um, if you if you work with love, then um, it's not work at all, or something. You know that selfless service of of it is it is love. It was a labour of love on everybody's part, um, and it was a very beautiful thing to to belong to. Yeah. So, should we take questions, Liz? Any questions or comments? Um, we all must identify the It's a really interesting question because <clears throat> it was instigated by the town deal. I don't know if people are aware of the town deal. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but this 25 million that we're one of the towns that have been allocated it. So this was part of, then we were told we could have half a million as an, it's called the accelerator fund. So it was people who knew it. Um, several of us were on the town deal board. Um, some were not, so kind of came together. And in a way we've then got, busy again in other ways. The Glaston Centre, uh, Morgana's been quite ill, Morgana West, because she's been such a key central figure in this, particularly from the pilgrimage side. So there have been several things that have... Um, so this group hasn't met since we were going to. We are going to meet forever and be kind of soulmates forever at one point, as you do when you do those projects. Um, so I think it's a, it's a big question mark that the Glaston Centre, with the Town Council, I think, and other interested bodies, this is something that we've done this today, uh, and it is funded by Mendip, by the way. We haven't said enough about that. Mendip, that's why we could do it free. Mendip have um, sponsored this, bless them. Um, so I think it's something we need to pick up, and I think it is whether we have, who looks after it, who tends the land on it, who makes sure, uh, is it Paul? From, Pete was asking that earlier. Do we expand it? Do we have passports or stamps? You know, how do we bring in the people who've got B&Bs and accommodation into it? Um, I've been looking at the Cornish, the Celtic Cornish way and what they've done. That's quite different again. So we're beginning to look at that. So I think the answer is we are open to seeing and we're looking for volunteers and people who will come and get engaged in it. And it might be something that the Pilgrim Reception Centre um, takes forward in some way. It's, it's, um, it hasn't kind of just disappeared. It's just that those busy people, you know, they say give a busy person a job and you'll get it done. Those very busy people have gone off to do other things. But I think the Glaston Centre um, with whoever can, can take it's a really good question. Do you want to add anything? Yeah. Hopefully. 
Um, there's another project in the town deal. So we've gone from doing those kind of apprenticeship projects and we're now on the big projects, which are millions each, some of them a number of millions, some of them under a million, but it is a huge number of big projects across what is a very small town for that kind of, of uh, income to come from government. But there is uh, one project that is being called the Robert Richards Initiative because Robert was the chair of the Town Deal Board in its first days and sadly um, Robert was ill and is no longer with us. So we're ensuring that one of the projects remembers Robert and that has walking and um, green routes and ac active travel is what the government call it now, walking and cycling. And, and we're also working on a project at Tor Leisure where lots of people use that land right in the middle of the town for exercise, you know, well-being, dog walking, anyone? Loads of dogs after lockdown, of course. Um, and so we're tying in there. We also need and we will tie in with the Avalon Marshes so that as people come to stay in Glastonbury, the Glastonbury Way may well be the centre of their visit to Glastonbury. But what we need to do is to make sure the Glastonbury Way then leads them. If you walk along Paradise Lane, you see Wells Cathedral, visit Wells Cathedral. If you uh, are up on Weirial Hill and you look down over the Avalon Marshes, then we're looking to improve the route down to the Avalon Marshes hopefully without too many cars on those delicate roads, because a lot of the roads around here being on peat are very delicate. So I think it's about how, how people are able to move around with this. I always think when, when you look at the map, I always think, you might think this is sacrilege, but when I look at this map, I see it as a butterfly. And I, I see it as the two wings of the butterfly and the butterfly's body is the centre of the town. So you do one wing and then back into the town another way. So what we need to do is make sure that the butterfly can take you other places too, including the Avalon Marshes and Wells and, and all of the other places that are very special around here. So we need to tie it in. We need to tie other places into Glastonbury. And the people, of course, who are Jill Barker's here from Middlewick, who are already running their businesses and working in that way, we need to pull them all together. And once we get all the business cases that are currently being put together for the government, they go in by the end of June. We've got another massive deadline this year, uh, and they are really huge pieces of work. Once those are in, then I think that we need to hopefully have a day or a half a day where we allow people's minds to run a bit freer instead of being run by government, treasury, business case stuff, we need to actually sit down and say, so what really matters to us now? What else can we pull in? Where can this lead us? And I think we just need to spend a bit of time and just loosen ourselves up a bit, maybe. I think that's absolutely right. Um, because the town deal is, is, is a unifying kind of interconnecting set of projects and there are interdependencies and John and Jill and Liz and myself are, are all on the town deal board. So we're part of that. The other thing that the Glaston Centre has been doing with the town council is in the leaflets downstairs. I've meant to bring it up with me. We've, we've done a leaflet of different walks now in Glastonbury and there's a kite mark you can get that's like the city of walks or something. We've been looking at that. So what we're also doing is saying, well, what are all these different walks? And I think there's four in there, but there are others. And what other walks should there be there? So I think you're going to get this, you know, joining up of a whole range of things um, that's about walking. And we'll be a walking town. Yeah? There was uh, about five years ago when I was still at the next door. Uh, I had a couple of friends. There is a pilgrimage route from Wells Cathedral to Glastonbury, and yeah. we walked two thirds of it from across. 
Right. Yes, and I think that's in the um, the national pilgrimage um, uh, walking, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so we, we looked at that when we were doing it. So I think there's all sorts of possibilities, you know, and we hope people are inspired and interested and fascinated and have some time to give to this because it, it can go into all different directions. And hopefully, Marion, you can get back involved with us on this. Yes, please. And if Glastonbury wants it, it'll happen. If Glastonbury wants it, it'll happen. Because this is all bigger than all of us. Yeah, so we are, we were one small team of 11 people doing our part. Um, and the energy of Glastonbury, I've been coming here on pilgrimage since 1989 uh, annually uh, and moved here in um, 12 years ago. Um, so I don't know other people here, but I just know there is an energy in Glastonbury when it wants something to manifest. It does. The right people appear and the things happen. We could not have invented this <laughs> in terms of that's what will happen. Yeah. A bit of opportunism in there, but I think healthy opportunism. Um, the other thing I was working on, and I was speaking to the uh, tour bus people, and they were interested Yeah. 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 It's another good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think the best I'll do is a scooter. Don't know about you. But yeah, but those, but walking, walks, pilgrimage, access, getting to other places is becoming a really, really important theme that this is part of it and there's more, you know, as you say, in the Robert Richards initiative, there's things in there. So other, other things will manifest. It's a really exciting time um, to be in Glastonbury. It's always exciting as Glastonbury, but there is something about having 25 million investment, uh, pilgrimage reviving, different things happening. You know, you can see the changes coming in the town, new people coming in, other people getting interested. It's a really, really, I think, exciting, inspiring, transformational time. And, and it will only fully happen if the energy wants it and people step up and are willing to be part of it. So I think on, on that note, we'll end. Or oh, last, last comment. Uh, well, not the answer to that. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's Yeah, I, I, I can tell you that it was one of the areas in Glastonbury where we had significant issues between land ownership, rights of way, health and well-being of Highland cattle, health and well-being of dogs and children. And so we did end up with, we went through lots and lots of options of what we could do to keep dogs and children away from, you know, the Highland cattle with their huge hill and and to make sure that the landowners who were really really upset every time anyone left the actual right of way 
and I got I got bawled out because I was about ten meters off the right of way wake, waiting for Councillor Ian Tucker and the landowner came out and bawled me out. And that really affected me because I thought if I'd come to Glastonbury for a few days and I was walking and I was looking west out to the sunset and someone came out and shouted at me for being 10 metres off the track, that would have ruined my weekend. And that was the bit at which I agreed with Councillor Ian Tucker that we actually needed to find a pragmatic solution to that small piece of right of way. So there are still styles so that for the purists who want to walk the right of way, they can still do that. And the landowner cannot prevent that. Right of way is a right of way. So we made sure that purists could do that, but we didn't put a dog you know, you can have those things that you lift up for dogs to go through. We didn't put that because we did not want children, dogs or anyone else hurt. And, and the landowner had an absolute litany of complaints about people's behaviour with the Highland cattle. So it wasn't what we wanted to do. You're, you're completely right. And putting up a fence is not what we had in mind. But we were very careful to make sure we kept the access points either end the same, that we got the landowner to agree to the bench and the board at the top where you come off one landowner's land through the kissing gate to the other. We spent a lot of time researching the industrial history of Beckery for that particular board. We made sure we kept the steps at the other end um, down into the Roman way. And we have, touch wood, got rid of the, 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 it wasn't an endless stream of complaints and upset, but it was regular. And it was regular for the town council, as well as for councillors and um, residents of Roman Way. And actually the people who live there, of course I had quite a lot to do with it because that's a permissive path, but I had to ensure the right of way stayed open. So I spoke to all of those residents on a number of occasions and they all said they prefer it now because they can take their kids out onto the path and their grandchildren and they can look at the Highland cattle, they can let their dogs have a good old run and no one can get hurt. So at the end of the day, it was pragmatic and it was more about safety than anything else. But I do agree with you. And it's interesting that we're ending on a, uh, you know, the, the, this was exactly the kind of thing we have to work through all the time. Different perspectives, different wants, different needs. I mean, we've done stories of people being accosted, you know, by this person. So there were times when we had to do pragmatism, where we had to do workable compromise. Uh, but you will always find that there was a reason. Exactly like this is just done. It didn't just come out of nowhere. We all had a grumpy day and decided to stick fences up, you know, and I'm not saying you're suggesting that, but there was always a well thought through reason and lots of complex. I've got to, I've been having it to you. I'm going to say, you know, and people's core, I can't get my fucking brain through any gate. And I really want a gate. Okay, well, we need to speak to the National Trust about that. And actually, National Trust have been working with us a lot lately um, about um, stopping.